It's fairly likely that when you use uh, persistent variables that you want to restore that kind of state so you can continue using it in the next scene. So let's say we have a timer and we will have a variable here and we'll just set the initial value manually but this will work however this this uh, value gets read basically. So if we set this to a higher value so the current seconds that we got to in the previous scene in our example will be 6.7. So if you plug that in here then and replay time it will just be stuck at 6.7 because that that is still setting that value. However if we use a variable modifier and we use the get mode so let's just name this variable t for time and then we plug that in there. If we use a switch then we can see what happens if we power it off. So we plug it in there. So while it's on, it's set to 6.7, and then we turn it off, and then it goes to zero. However, if we wire it in the current value into itself, oh, like that, then it works as normal. So if we power this on, in this case, if we just leave it plugged in, it will set the value, but it, then it will. This is a higher value, so it will keep. Uh, setting it. But if you were go, uh, counting down, for example, then it will kind of mess up and stuff. So we, ideally we want that to just set it for one frame right at the start and then to just turn off completely so it isn't messing with it at all. So in that case we can add a timeline and make it really thin and use L1 and right and left on the D-pad to scale it just width-wise, time-wise. And then you can put this on the timeline and then make it last just one frame. So when you zoom in as far as this, you start seeing these columns. Those columns are actually frames of logic. Uh, logic works uh, 30 times a second. It runs all the logic. So this is 1 30th of a second, and it's the smallest amount of time a bit of logic can run. So then we can plug that into there, and then it'll set it to the value and then stop messing with it and let it run uh, like a timer normally runs. Uh, you can also do this for a counter, for example. So if we add a counter and give it some larger value, then we can wire this into here, and it sets it for that frame. But then if we loop it to itself as well, then we can carry on using it as normal. So if we, uh, I'll just add a switch into plus and then we can add to it as normal whereas if we did that then it keeps on resetting back to this value so we only want to set it at the start and then let it set itself as normal like that let's try a selector so a selector has this uh, active port which is different based on which of these ports is active so if a is active then that will be zero if D is active, it will be 3, because it's 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So if we set this to be 3, and allow this to go higher like that, then we can set that value to be D, uh, but only at the start. But then when it gets unpowered, it, it's uh, this is no longer sending a value, so it's actually sending a zero, which makes it go back to A. So let's see if this works. If we plug the active port into the active port, and that works fine. And then we can we can move it around as normal, just as, just as we would as normal. And if we wanted to, we could put a destroyer on here. We could do this a different way. If we had a chip. This works if this whole chip isn't linked to some object, otherwise the destroyer will affect the object as well. But if we put this in that chip and have it affect there like that, then we can use a destroyer and have it affect that chip that is in. Uh, this, this destroyer, a destroyer when it's activated, actually destroys things on the next frame. So this will run for a frame, and then that whole chip will be destroyed. 
and it will be left at the right um, the right position. So that's another method uh, that you could use if you want to just tidy up this stuff up. And quite a common uh, use for this is to use it with a uh, health manager. So if you want uh, your puppet to um, keep the same health between scenes, then you could use this method. So let's plug that into there. Make sure it's on the overwrite uh, wire blend. So use L1 to see what the name of the blend is and L1 and X to cycle through them until it looks like this plug and that's the right mode. So now it's on three, so it's setting it to three and we can plug that into itself. So the key to this thing working is for the uh, original value to be zero because this uh, this wire blend mode overwrite, um, if it has multiple things plugged into it, it finds the one that is furthest from zero and uses that one. So then if this um, this value uh, isn't further from zero than this value, 100. So we need to set this to zero. And then when we play time, it will set it to three. And then if we hold X, it will subtract as normal. So let's just set this to a higher value. So we're on 25 and then we hold X and it's subtracting. Cool. Now the the next step though is that you want to store this value for the next scene after this one, um, if you get uh, damaged and so on. So for that we need another variable modifier that affects that variable. And we'll have this set the variable continuously. And then we just plug in the current health into the value. Again we want that plug symbol. Uh, so now if we just um, use that uh, and we set set it to use a zone and we'll use a controller sensor so we can test it easier in play mode so do that and set it to remote control and while we hold X we will power that health modifier so while I'm holding X it's uh, decreasing the health value now we'll we'll just display that value over here so now if we play the scene and then we hold X it's subtracting from the health um, now let's just make it persistent and put it in a dream and see if that works so when we push the touchpad we will activate a doorway over here and then we make a dream and import that scene Okay, so uh, now we play the dream. So we're on that initial value of 25 and we hold X and we're losing health. And then we push the touchpad and we're back to six again, uh, just as normal. I'd like to thank BGA Port Authority, DeadMC, ScheemeDBT, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration and I'll see you in the next one.